All right, folks, so in today's video, we're going to take a look at testing coaxial cable. We're going to test a couple of different pieces of cable for a couple of different things. Uh, we're going to start off by taking a look at this one. And um, actually, a buddy gave me this cable, and we would use this cable for testing different components with tools like a spectrum analyzer. And what's unique about this cable is, is that it has an SMA male connector on this side. And that's going to be important because we need things like adapters when we do these kind of things. So you can see it's similar to a regular piece of coaxial connector, like a um, this would be a PL239 in its construction. But it's just little teeny and small. And then on this side of the cable, we have an N connector. And this will plug right into my spectrum analyzer. Let's take a quick look at that. Bring your electronic projects to life with PCBWay.com. Get top-notch PCB manufacturing and assembly services without breaking the bank. Enjoy fast turnaround time, reliable worldwide shipping, and the assurance of quality at every step. From initial prototypes to full-scale production, PCBWay.com offers unbeatable value and customer satisfaction. Trust PCBWay to be your partner in innovation. Okay, if you take a look at the spectrum analyzer here, you can see that I have these two different connectors. One is called a TG source, and that is a tracking generator source that outputs a signal across a specific set of frequencies at a known level. And then we hook a coaxial cable up to this. This is a female end connector. And then you have an input that comes in over here where it says RF input. Let me get out of the way. And this RF input will measure the signal that tr is going through our coaxial cable transmission line or any devices under test. And it does a comparison between the known signal of the tracking generator source and what it's getting in the RF input. And it plots that on a graph so we can make an analysis and a determination. But these are both N connectors and it's kind of why I wanted to show this N female. Okay, and here's an example of that cable connected to the spectrum analyzer. You can see it's coming out of the tracking generator source. And then over here, we have the SMA connector that's actually connected to an adapter. And we'll take a look at that. And this will allow me to do the measurement that I want. Okay, so what we have here is a standard multimeter. This is just a Kai Wheats HT-118A. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn this on. And let me zoom in a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to set this to uh, resistance measurement. So you can see that we have ohms, so we can measure resistance, diodes, and then we have this little thing here that looks like a speaker output. That allows us to test continuity. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit my function button, and you can see that we now have that little speaker icon right there. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my coaxial probes, and the first thing I want to do is I want to test the physical integrity of this coaxial cable. We're just going to use this one uh, for this particular test. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to touch one probe to the shield side of both of these. And that's beeping, and hopefully you can hear that. And what that tells me is, is that I have connectivity on the shield side all the way through this piece of coaxial cable. So that's good. These are PL259s. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch the probes to the center pin and there you can see we have continuity so that means that the center pin that goes through this coaxial cable seems to be just fine the last thing i want to do is i want to actually touch the center pin here and i'm going to take my other probe and i'm going to set it to the shield and we don't have a connection there and what that tells me is is that i don't have any breaks or damage inside the cable where i potentially may have a short so that's a good thing so what i want to do is i want to test this cable for insertion loss and what that will tell me is how much of the signal is degraded when it goes through this particular cable. Short cables like this are typically used for testing devices like filters or, uh, I don't know, things along those lines. Like, for example, here's a bandpass filter. And I would use a cable like this or a transmission line like this in order to test this. Because when you typically test those types of devices, you want to keep your transmission line short. But the problem that we have is, is that this SMA male connector doesn't fit onto my spectrum analyzer. So what I have is an adapter here, and this is an SMA female, and I should be able to just connect this in just fine. Now when you make these connections, it's important to twist this part. Don't twist the device you're screwing in because it'll spin on the pin of that center conductor and it'll wear out your connection. So now when we take a look at this, we have two N-type male connectors, and you can see that they're slightly different there. 
but they both have a center pin in there and they should work just fine. Uh, as I mentioned, this is an adapter. This is a through adapter or a barrel adapter. This is the end connector female. You can see there's a little port there that we would want our center pin to go into. Let me get this connected up to the spectrum analyzer and we're going to pull the spectrum analyzer display up on the screen and then we can see this tested. Okay, so here's the display for the spectrum analyzer. I'm actually using a tool called Easy Spectrum to remote control a Siglin SA, SSA 3021X. And the first thing I want to do is I want to go over my tracking generator tab and I'm going to go tracking generator state on. And what we can see now is that a signal is coming out of that tracking generator source and going into our RF input measuring that cable. And our line here is anything but flat. Now, what we can do is we can actually normalize this. And what that will do is it will take into account for any deviations that we see in the cable. But what you can see here is, is that at certain frequencies, let's get a marker on here. Um, we do have some deviation. So let's go to marker type normal. And there we have a, a marker type. Now, when we took a look at our tracking generator tab, our tracking generator level is negative 20 dB. And we can see over here with our marker, and let's go back to the marker table. It, what we can see at our marker is, is that up here, this is negative 19.95 to 97 dBm. So what we can actually see here is I can move the marker to various locations on the sweep and that, change, that will change. So for example, here is negative 19.7, give or take. And down here, you can see that we are about 20.5. That's not that big of a deal. So this actually looks like a pretty good cable that has a minimum impact. And the, and the reason we're testing it without normalization is, is that we might use this cable in line with the system. We're not normalizing and it's important to understand any deviations that we see. But let's go ahead and go with a normalized state. And then when we do that, you can see here that our tracking generator line is now set at zero and it's flat all the way across. So it's accounting for any of those uh, abnormalities. Okay, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna test this cable. And you can see that it has these, I get these mixed up. I get the SO239 and the PL259 mixed up. But this adapter has an SO239 and we plug that into the PL259 to get us an N-type male connector. And that'll allow me to hook this up to the spectrum analyzer and we can do an insertion loss test on this piece of cable. I've got no idea how long this cable is. I'm gonna guess it's around 17 feet because I think I had it from my CB days. That's right, CB operator. And if you take a look at it, you should be able to see that it is a piece of RG58AU. And this is pretty lossy coax, so we should be able to see the loss that we would get at this cable if we were using it to connect a transceiver to an antenna system. Okay, we have a coaxial set up. So let's go back and turn on the tracking generator. And then you can see, so we're set for a negative 20 dBm, which is this line right here. And you can see the higher we go up in frequency, the more inconsistency we see in the tracking generator. Now we can normalize this and we could test with this cable and the computer inside the spectrum analyzer would account for all of that. But what I wanted to show is, is that if we were going to use this cable in an installation at a particular frequency, we might have some problems. So let's take a look at our frequency and change the sweep and see what it would be, say, if we were using this on a 70 centimeter ham radio. Okay, you can see we've adjusted our sweep. Here's the start, 400 megahertz, stop 490. And then if we want to go over here to take a look at our marker table, you can see our, we just have this set up as a normal marker. Our marker right now is at 460.48 megahertz. And if we take a look, we are losing about 2 dB of power, which I would say is reasonably significant. If you were uh, transmitting in maybe 25 watts, you would be losing almost half of your power. Um, we can figure out exactly how much that is, but that's a different video. And the important piece here is, is that when we use coaxial cable, we want to make sure, one, that it's structurally sound. So we test that with a multimeter. And then we want to make sure that it is fit for the use or the purpose that we are going to be using this with a particular radio. In this particular case, if you were using RG58AU and you were transmitting on the 440 band or 70 centimeters, you'd have a problem. Now, maybe that's not a big problem to you, but I would consider 2 dB of loss to be uh, a reason to shop for some other cable. 
I'm not saying this cable is bad. I'm just saying it's not fit for that particular use case. Anyhow, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, post them below and I'll do my best to respond.